Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today let's cover what I think are the best PC builds you can create for the month of February. And fortunately, I've got some new additions to the website here on PCBuilds.gg thanks to the releases of the new RTX 4070 Super and eventually the new RTX 4080 Super. So now in total, I have eight different builds on PCBuilds.gg and we're slowly gonna go ahead and start filling out the website. For those of you who don't know, this is my all-in-one shop for all my different recommended PC build lists that I can continually update over time. So if you wanna find what is the best build list for say $800, $1,500, $2,000, or you can even use these handy little sliders and features here on the website. You can find all of that on PCBuilds.gg, which I obviously have linked in the description below, as well as the builds I'll be highlighting in this video. So whether you're looking for a mainstream 1080p gaming PC build that is going to be on a budget or a super high-end 4K gaming PC, I think this website has it all, and I think it's also really newbie friendly, so yeah. Let's go ahead and cover my favorite builds for the month of February. Now, the first one I wanna cover is going to feature an NVIDIA graphics card, which at the moment, like I said, I only have one. I'm filming this video before the 4080 Super comes out, but when it does, I'm probably gonna make a 4080 Super build here on my website. But here for $1,500, I have a gaming PC that is centered around the new RTX 4070 Super, because I think, all things considered, it's actually pretty decent for the price. And as you can see right now, it's selling for $600, $610. And let's see, what about on Amazon? 630? Yeah, that sounds about right. It's selling for a decent price. And the performance increase you get in that graphics card over the 7800 XT, even if it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I think is worth it. So pair that up with a Ryzen 7 7700, a standard B650 motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 6,000 megahertz cast latency 30 RAM, which I found to be the best blend of price to performance right now in DDR5 RAM, because you can get these for just below $100, and that speed to cast latency is going to result in the best performance without overspending on your RAM. But unfortunately, SSD prices have been going up, so I had to downgrade the SSD from a two terabyte M.2 SSD to a one terabyte M.2 SSD. But fortunately, let's see, the one here on Newegg. Okay, so this Kingspec XG7000 is by far the best value PCI Gen 4.0 SSD you can still buy that has thankfully not gone up in price like the other PCI Gen 4.0 SSDs because it features read and write speeds up to 7,000 megabytes per second. It's TLC and it comes with a built-in DRAM controller and it's 56 bucks for one terabyte. So if you can get your hands on this M.2 SSD, then that is the best deal. But the two terabyte deal is also really good, but I think it's currently sold out. Yeah, that's the SSD we're using in our $1,500 PC build guide releasing soon on the channel. It's a very good SSD for the money and one of the few that have kind of beaten the current price increases in SSDs. Like on Amazon, this is the best one I could found is this Sabrent one terabyte drive. Eh, not the best. And Best Buy is not too great either because I think here you can get like a crucial T500. Yeah, it's, it's not the best either. But then for the case, I think the NZXT H6 is still a fantastic case. The model that I have linked is this model with the three included ARGB fans here in the front. But if you want one that has no fans, that's going to be even cheaper at about $110. So you can perk out the airflow however you want, or actually it does come with fans. And then for the power supply, because you're using a 4070 Super and a 7700, you can just stick it with a regular 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Now I do have an AIO linked in this build but I just wanna let you know that the 7700 is so efficient and it already comes with a Wraith Spire RGB cooler. You don't need an AIO or even a custom CPU cooler if you wanted to save money, but of course it's not gonna look as cool. So I have an AIO here. I might swap it out for a regular air cooler so that would make more sense for a 7700, but there's my $1,500 PC build. And let's see what else we have. What Intel based builds that we have. Okay, yeah, so my Cheaper BC builds still haven't changed because I think going Intel right now is actually the move for cheaper PC builds over AM4 because motherboard and CPU prices are still very low. For instance, the motherboard I recommend for this build, this ASRock B660M DDR4 motherboard is still being sold at 95 bucks. Comes with onboard USB Type-C, which is kind of nice in a cheap motherboard like this. 
Pair that up with an i3-12100F, an ARC A580, and that's going to be a fairly solid 1080p gaming PC. And yeah, 16 gigabytes of RAM, another one terabyte M.2 SSD, although you're gonna have to save a little bit of money and get a PCI Gen 3.01, which isn't a deal breaker. Put it in a Q300L version two, Oh yeah, this one, because the Q300L version two comes with a glass side panel and USB type C there at the very top, if you can see, which works great with our motherboard. And this is more or less our $600 PC build from last year, just now about $100 cheaper. So this is a good budget build for 1080p 144 FPS gaming. And there's some other builds on this website. For instance, the $2,000 gaming PC build is pretty much the $2,000 PC build that we did last month in January, which I think is still pretty excellent. That's centered around the 7800X3D and the 7800XTX, but I created a new $1,200 micro ATX PC build list that I wanna show you guys. And I'm definitely thinking of making this on the channel. So this is gonna be centered around a Ryzen 5 7600 and an RX 7800X XT because although it's been a few months, the 7700 XT hasn't gone down in price, which is kind of what I was betting on when I made my original $1,200 PC build back in September. It's still being sold for $450. And at that point, you might as well get a 7800 XT for only 50 bucks more as right now on eBay, it's selling for 500 bucks. A standard micro ATX B650 motherboard with Wi-Fi, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. You know, that's 6,000 megahertz. CL30 RAM is the best speed to cast latency ratio for the money. Another one terabyte M.2 SSD, that's PCI Gen 4.0. But this case here from Zalman is actually pretty neat. And they recently hit me up and they're like, hey, can we feature this case in one of your build guides? and I'm like, absolutely. So I think it's gonna happen because the P30 here, it's that dual glass kind of design, comes with three ARGB fans already in the case. I saw this at Computex and it looked pretty nice for the price. I think the white version actually looks a bit better. I just decided to use black because that stands out on my website and it's a hundred bucks. So I think it's kind of like a cheaper height Y40. And then you got a 750 watt 80 plus bronze. Uh, yeah, because that's gonna be enough for a 7800 XT and a 7600, which I guess for this build, we're gonna stick with the stock cooler, but you're welcome to get an aftermarket cooler if you wanna make the build look a little bit cooler. But I'm definitely interested in making this build guide in one of my videos. And uh, I think that's it. Actually, no, the only other new build on this website is an $1,800 PC build that I decided to create as I found out that the RTX 4070 Ti Super didn't really deliver the knockout blow I was expecting it to have versus the 7900 XT. So with that being said, I decided to make this $1,800 PC build that is just a tier below my $2,000 PC build centered around the same CPU, but with the 7900 XT at its discounted price of $725 or $730. Or actually with this, yeah, you can get it for $730. That's Black Friday prices right now on the 7900 XT, which is really nice. And you know, once again, B650E motherboard, same RAM, two terabyte M.2 SSD though, which is nice. But then for the case, because I was just like, yeah, this case, it defies all modern trends, but the performance is too good to pass up for its price. The Lee and Lee Land Cool 216 is honestly all you need for an ATX case because this has all the performance you need. The two front fans I think are what? 160 millimeters, which is a step above 140, which is already a step above 120. And yeah, it's not a dual glass. It's not a dual chamber design, but I still think it looks really clean. And you can also get this in white for the same price. It's a really nice case. That and then bump up the power supply to 850 watts. Once again, this Montec Century G5 is, I found to be like the best bang for the buck. That also includes a PCI Gen 5.0 cable if you ever decide to switch to NVIDIA. And then for the CPU cooler for that 7800X3D, I went a little bit bland. We have this dual fan CPU cooler that from Scythe that is really good for the money. It doesn't look the best though, but you can always, you know, choose your own cooler. But anyways, that's only a snippet of some of the best builds I've featured from PC PCBuild.gg so far, and I'm going to fill up this website with more builds in the future, especially more NVIDIA builds now that the 4080 Super was, I think it'd be really good. So if you wanna check out this website, once again, I have it linked in the description below along with the different builds that I listed throughout this video. And I wanna thank you guys for watching this video all the way till the end. That's really awesome. Man, I'm really busy today, but I gotta knock out these videos. So once again, I wanna thank you guys for your continual support 
and for your awesome reception in some of our latest videos. It's been very motivating. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterville channel, signing out.